Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus here again. You know, I want to talk to you about today is the part that was left out. The part that was left out. You know, for quite some time now, I've been talking to you about God and I've been talking to you about our society and I talk to you, I've talked to you about our way of life. I've talked to you about changes, the kind of change that I could perceive as being the answer to our prayers, peace and prosperity and freedom and joy, fulfillment of our dreams, our needs, and our uh, wants and our desires met. Those things that are coming amongst us for survival, I guarantee, like food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, and infrastructure, and all the other things of life. So um, I didn't always know this, but in the beginning, I want you to know, I grew up just like all most people, where I come from, in ghetto life. Well, it wasn't really ghetto, it was plantation life. Things you knew as you grew growing up, one of the most important things that are education and all of the things that normal people do. We call it normal. Then there were other things that were normal that people didn't talk about that much. And that was their young people, little sex. Once they discover that there's something as wonderful and pleasurable as sex, they want to do it every time they get a break. And they actually try it. Now, everybody knows that is true. Now, some people, for one reason or another, might not. But for the most part, most people do. And that stays a part of your life as you grow up and mature. You go to church, you see these people, and everybody is faking it. You know, they know what you, they say, this is the way it's supposed to be, and everybody try to present themselves as being like they're supposed to be, but then they are really like they are. <clears throat> you know what that story entails. That's how people, kids learn how to lie. That's how they learn how to do the same thing that their parents do and, who, and grandparents and so on and so forth. But I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that when it comes down to the message that I bring to you, it is because I don't know why, but I do know it happened. A power that is my superior tapped me and wanted to teach me that we, all of us, all of our lives is fate. What I mean by fate, it's getting us from A to wherever we're going. But it's really not getting us anywhere. What does that mean by that? God wanted me to see, and, he, and I've got documentary out here for you to check out. He wanted me to see that there are two different types of systems. They're the systems of men, and they're the system of God. There's the system of men and the system of God. The earth maintains itself. It lives on the system of God. And if you and I, who are created by God, are to maintain ourselves and have all of our joys met, it's because we're operating under the system of God. God's system says that all of the things that I've given are given for the benefit of anybody on earth who needs them. And the ability for those things to exist, I put desires and aspirations in the minds and hearts of people so they can imagine. And then I put within them the ability all over the board for each individual to participate in one way or another in the creation of all of these goods, making all humankind owners of all the things that exist for them to partake of it whenever they need, want, or desire it. Nothing else. That's God's way. There ain't no, but then that comes along with somebody, man's way. Man's way says that you got to have money. God don't need money because it all belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God, including you and your belly and your how. Everything belongs to God. So what God won't do with some money? That's because that's the thief. The thief is using money to snatch you off of what you already got. To use you, to abuse you, to have you do what it wants you to do. Maybe this time it wants you to do with the Republicans. They're trying to stack the court. Then maybe next time it wants you to do with the Democrats that they super stack the court. What in the hell is wrong with people? And so, ladies and gentlemen, I had to see this. You don't see it. Preachers and everybody out there telling you about God, out there raising for that money. When you are born again, it's because you understand the difference between the two. And you start standing up for, the, for God. And yes, when you stand up for God, you live in a world that needs money to do this and to do that. But this is God's world. 
And if you stand up for God and God say you don't need no money, you still need a place to stand up. You stand up on the principles that God said you need it and you're supposed to have it and you ain't got no money, you don't require no money. You stand up on that principle. You don't have to go following the people that say, I ain't getting you nothing because you ain't got no money. What kind of God do you serve? And you go get up this Sunday morning talking about God, telling somebody about God, trying to teach somebody about God. No one of those people went over there and joined those Christian people, so-called Christian people went on and joined Donald Trump. Why? Because you had nothing to offer them. You offered them nothing. Man didn't offer them nothing, and your God didn't offer them nothing. And the reason that God didn't offer them nothing is because you, the, the God that you're talking about is a phony God. Knows nothing about love. Nothing. I know you think you know something about love. No, you don't. That's what God wanted me to show you. In order for you to love, you're going to talk about love today, I think, in the churches. Love divine. Love divine. Love divine. And everybody that really knows God, after having a discussion about love divine today, tomorrow should never be the same again. Because you should tell the world, well, don't step out there on the world just yet, but you should tell America. That this pain and suffering that exists in this country is due to the activities of men. The activities of men and those who are going along with it. And by the power of the almighty God, you're not going to stand for it anymore. And I guarantee you, if you mean it, it will end today and tomorrow will be a brand new day. But you know good and well you're not going to do that. Why? <laughs> God, I don't see him. Ain't that what you're going to say? So Donald Trump is your God. But anyway... I wanted to say this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see if I got any more time. I got maybe another minute. <clears throat> this is what I want to say. I'm not, you know, a lot of folks don't want to stand up and say things because they know they don't want to be exposed. They don't want to be uncovered. But I want to tell you, I am a sinner man. I grew up, as I mentioned a moment ago, I wanted a whole bunch of girlfriends. Cause why? Because they were pretty. And sex was good. And so variety meant whatever it meant. And so I caused some problems, the same problems that you catch today, when you just out there having uncontrolled sex. Next thing you know, you know what those problems are. I don't have to name them. And when you go get up, you still, but as I said, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what the sacrifice that I went through that to learn this lesson. Living in Chicago, seeing the poverty and how it hurts. Ooh, wee. Mm, mm, mm. Now, I grew up on a plantation, but I was taught some beautiful things. I mean, I didn't see it in the everyday life, but I was taught some beautiful things. I believed, well, I'm just going to tell you like this. I believed in God as a child. I believed, I accepted that thing about God. And not only that, I even accepted that about Jesus. And what I loved about Jesus is that such a wonderful person, what's a wonderful character. I mean, Thor and Captain America, they touched Jesus. A lot of people want to be Thor. A lot of people want to be Captain America. But I wanted to be Jesus. Why? Because Jesus cared about people. Jesus cared about people. And every time I saw or thought about Jesus caring about somebody, it made me feel, ooh, fantastic. Because that's what Jesus stood for. And so that's all I wanted to stand for. Now, I guess that might have had something to do with, with my being chosen. But having seen that pain in Chicago, I decided that I was going to turn my life around from seeking after a successful life with money, with man's way. I was going to try to introduce God's way. I was going to commit myself to commit God's way, that you don't need money. There's a way of life that produces the heaven on earth. And it's been complicated. I mean, right away, I, I, I was married for about 10 years, got divorced. My, my wife said, no, we want man's way. She didn't mean it. She didn't know what she was talking about, but that's what she said. <clears throat> and then you find yourself out there. Yeah, I made, I committed myself. I said, okay, you know, you know the kind of changes that you have to go through. 
to do the kind of things that are important to you, it might be costly. And so I prepared myself because uh, I knew that the way I saw humanity in contrast to what I understood things are supposed to be, they were so different that I might have to, I might not be able to survive at all. But I committed myself, even if I have to eat grass and drink pee. <clears throat> if that's what it took, that's what I, it would take. And I'd commit myself. Well, I ended up going into the Navy. And then, you know that story I've told you a thousand times. I walked out of there with an other than honorable separation. Because man's way of doing things just was too rough when you compare it with God's way. And so I wanted to keep on walking the path that I've been given. So I walked out of there with another than honorable separation. Came on out. Life goes on, but you're still learning. Go into a town and somebody say, you've been gone so long, why don't we make you mayor? <laughs> I thought about that. That was my hometown. You'd have been in Mississippi. You've heard me say something about that over. And uh, another brother was there who had been there all the time. Didn't like it because I'd been away and he hadn't. He had been doing stuff. I don't know. He took an issue with it. So I decided to leave that alone. It wasn't that important. Anyway, <clears throat> I uh, realized that if I had, well, I, didn't, I did eat some grass and I did drink some pee. But I didn't want to do too much of that, so I decided that I might have to do a few things. I stopped by Valley State, did a little recruiting out there, I think for about a year maybe, a school term or something. And then <clears throat> I ended up in Minnesota. And I traveled all over the place doing what I was given to do. And in the end of it, ladies and gentlemen, in the end of it, even, even to this very day, we're talking about divine love. It ain't happening. Not in America. Now, when I say not in America and it ain't happening, this is what I mean. I know that there are some of you who might be locked in a closet, who are expressing as much divine love as you can. If you are locked in a closet and you're expressing as much divine love as you can, then you, that's fantastic. <clears throat> that's heavenly. But the moment you come out from that locked up, then whatever the problem that existed in that locked up space, now that problem is magnified because it, it exists all over the country. And it is just as important to deal with it all over the country as it is to deal with it in that little closet space. So I'm trying to tell you this. There'll be all kinds of things that you have to go through, that you're going to be put through if, to get you off this course. Not because people are mean. It's just that they don't understand. And if you do, I don't even have to tell you, you're going to stay on this course. And you know what? The whole world in time is going to wake up to it. Everybody tells you this. You're going to wake up in time. The reason that you're caught up in this matrix on, on a hell level is because of the blinders that's on your heart. I'm telling you, that's all it is. All of this pain and suffering exists because you can't see and don't want to see. Well, I think I, I wanted to say some other things to you, ladies and gentlemen. I think I'll take a pass on that today. I just want to let you know this. <clears throat> when I think it was maybe about 20 years ago, you got a message about God's way of life that would create heaven on earth. 